Jamie, if you'd like to kick us off. Absolutely. Thanks, Ashley. Um, so good morning, um, good afternoon, or, or even good evening, depending on where you are. Um, welcome to our webinar. We are super excited to talk about the new pairs of offering for payment automation. And uh, we are doing this together with our partner, Finexio, um, a company that is expert and pioneer in payment services. So we are going to speak you through what pairs of pay is, um, how it can deliver immediate and concrete value to you. And we are definitely also going to show a live demo. So let's look at the agenda shortly. Um, so we are going to do a short presentation to give you an introduction on why we believe this is an interesting opportunity to all of you to gain value by automating your payment process. And then our um, colleague Tammy will show you how it will look in a real live demo environment. Let's take the next slide, please. So my name is um, Sami Peltonen. Um, I am heading the solution portfolio here. Um, I have been working for the company for a year now uh, and been in procure to pay domain my entire career almost. And uh, seen the evolution from best of breed point solutions towards a fully integrated end-to-end -end procure to pay process. And uh, now very excited to be launching uh, another great addition to our portfolio, making it even stronger. And I'm super happy that I'm joined today by a real payment expert, uh, Chris Wyatt from our partner, Finexio. Uh, would you, Chris, want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Sammy. Uh, well, welcome, everybody. Super excited to be here. Uh, my name is Chris Wyatt. I'm the Chief Strategy and Product Officer at Finexio. Um, uh, like Sammy, I've spent a lot of my career uh, in the B2B payment space, and primarily because, you know, uh, Ernest, a co-founder, and myself, you know, have seen sort of across verticals, you know, and, and across time, uh, just a huge opportunity to really help uh, optimize and monetize uh, B2B payments. And so over the course of my tenure, uh, I've probably moved around half a trillion dollars within uh, uh, several verticals, but all, again, all focus on the B2B space. Finexio is actually our third uh, B2B payments company that we've worked with uh, together. So super excited to be here and talk about talk about the solution and support the Parasoft team, but uh, I think it's a great solution and a great addition to uh, what Parasoft offers offers uh, today. So thank you. Thank you, Chris. Great to have you here. Um, so this is uh, our story so far here at Pearsoft. We started by integrating three companies that all excel in the area of uh, procure to pay uh, with an intention to deliver a um, holistic spend management experience. And as a part of this uh, process, we, we introduced um, uh, recently a new analytics offering that has been received super well in our customer base consisting of almost 2,000 clients today. Um, and one of the most exciting aspects there is the peer benchmarking capability, allowing you to see real-time invoice processing benchmarks from the, the customer community. And now we are moving to a next uh, exciting stage in our invoice to pay innovation journey, as we are launching this uh, entirely new payment offering, which we are doing in cooperation with uh, Finexio. So let's go to the next one. Um, by adding payment services, um, payers can handle now the entire source to pay cycle, all the way from procurement, requisitioning, to invoice processing, and finally closing the loop with payment. And with our analytics in the center, we can then deliver a, a visibility across uh, your entire procure to pay process. All right, so um, let's now zoom into payments. And we would like to start by doing a little poll here. So I uh, would like to ask you how you are doing your payments today. So, so what is the primary payment method? Are you printing checks or, or using um, your ERP and connecting that to a bank? Or are you using uh, some digital payment solution? And, and if you do a blend of, of different uh, ways, uh, you can select uh, what, is the, what is the most common way of uh, paying today. Let's give a couple of more moments to you to give the voting. All right, can we see the see the results? So um, 
yeah, not surprisingly, um, checks clearly dominating. Um, uh, many of you also using using ERP with the bank, and then uh, some using also digital payment solutions. And uh, I mean, very very well aligned uh, with uh, what we see, you know, broader in our customer base. And this is exactly why we wanted to invest in adding a payment service to our portfolio to, to provide a, a way to remove any extra steps from the invoice to pay process and obviously get rid of uh, any, any paper checks. Let's look at the next slide, please. Um, so what we are launching today is uh, Pairs of Pay. Um, it is a single electronic platform that streamlines payables and payment processing automating payment processes, generating savings, and providing fraud protection. It's tightly connected to our invoice automation process and will handle 100% of your payments. And what is really um, remarkable here is that it is not only a tool or, or solution, but it's actually a comprehensive payment service, taking the entire burden away from you when it comes to paying to your suppliers. So we, together with Finexio, uh, we will take care of the vendor enablement, ensuring your suppliers get paid with the right way at right time. And, and what is a massive benefit also here is that we will also validate all of your suppliers before the payment to ensure you are only doing uh, businesses with uh, valid and real vendors. So um, at this point, I would like to give the mic to Chris to speak a bit more about Finexio and the, and the very impressive service they deliver. So Chris, the stage is all yours now. <laughs> Thanks, Sammy. Uh, yes, so Finexio has been around uh, really since 2015 um, in its sort of current form, really with the focus on really helping customers, helping, you know, partners like uh, <clears throat> Parasoft be able to offer payment solutions, you know, specifically focused around accounts payable uh, and be able, being able to offer a service that really makes it simple. Because uh, what we see invariably, a lot of, you know, the folks there that are Still sending checks, uh, you know, printing them in house, not uncommon. We really see that. In fact, you know, I, I would say on average, you know, the typical Finexio customer is probably doing 60, 70% checks. Uh, and it's paper, it's expensive, it's time consuming. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about fraud and why, uh, you know, checks are still rampant with fraud. And how Finexio helps uh, protect from that. But I think, uh, you know, back to Sammy's point on closing the loop. Um, so Finexio has been blessed to work with, you know, several sort of folks in the procure to pay space. Um, and invariably, what we see is, most of these systems, they do a very good job of like invoice management, uh, approvals, you know, the actual procurement. But when it comes to payment, you know, there typically aren't aren't great solutions. Or you're doing something like printing in-house, because uh, you know that's what your software allows you to do. So what Finexi was really founded on was, hey, how do we just take that entire pain of actually making the payments, take that away from the customers, and do it better than they could ever do it themselves? Because uh, you know what, what we know is it typically is a disjointed process. You may be sending some checks, you know, to these vendors or suppliers. You may be logging onto your bank to, you know, send an ACH or a wire to these folks. Uh, and it's it's laborious, it's time consuming, uh, and it tends to be not very high sort of value add uh, service in the grand scheme of you know what an AP or a finance team does. And so our goal is really to make it simple. You know, think of it uh, like one click. And so to do that. Finexio has had to build, you know, really build all the rails to do that. We connect with multiple banking partners, uh, really to, to deliver payments the best way we know how, uh, with the supplier and vendor in mind, always taking, you know, into consideration, you know, what their preferences are, but really to, you know, get those checks off your off your plate. Uh, you don't have to worry about logging into your bank anymore, making the payments on time. And then too, there's a whole, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about this, but then exception management, security. How do you make sure you're talking to the right vendor, the right, you know, and they are who they say they are. So I mean, Finexio takes very serious, uh, uh, you know, because again, we want we want everybody's money to get to the right place, you know, to pay for the services that, uh, you know, our products that you've purchased. And so we've we've done a lot to make sure that we uh, do that. Uh, super happy to, you know, talk, you know, talk about our growth. We've been growing, you know, 300% plus a year. Uh, we see that continuing um, and we hope to have a great, uh, you know, solution uh, with Parasoft and continue that trend and really provide a great service, uh, you know, to all of you. I'm going to go to the next one. Yeah. So um, just sort of back to what Finexio has seen. And again, something, you know, I've seen over the course of my career, again, it's my third B2B payments company is most of the companies we deal with, you know, are, are doing something in house. You know, one of our most recent customers will, will buy produce. They were hundred percent checks and 25,000 checks a year. Uh, day one with us, they're not sending any more checks. Finexio was able to take that entire lot, entirely off their plate. 
and then add additional services where we're actually doing better, you know, address verification. What do we do if a check, you know, goes goes stale or is undeliverable? But next is in the business of managing all that. So these time consuming, sort of antiquated, sort of error prone, you know, processes you may have or have been having to deal with because like, I, I guess this is just what we do. Uh, we got to pay the bills. So, you know, if somebody's going to, you know, print those checks off or, uh, you know, use another solution. Our goal is to make that simple, take that off your plate, make it effortless. Uh, so, you know, CFOs, you know, the accounting team, the finance team can really focus on, you know, more value added services and not have to worry about it. They can know 24 seven, you know, better transparency than they ever had themselves as to, hey, did that payment get to the supplier? Is there any issue? And then, of course, dealing with exceptions, because unfortunately they happen, you know, if you didn't get paid the right amount or the, you know, the payment uh, was lost, you know, Phoenix has got a lot of automation routines already built in so that we can remediate those exceptions, make sure that, you know, suppliers, vendors get paid, uh, and make sure that they're happy. And so, you know, really what we've spent our time doing is, you know, creating solutions that, you know, Parasoft can use you know, offer Parasoft pay, you know, FedEx sits in the background just to make sure everything uh, is working. And then ultimately you guys have that holistic sort of close, you know, full loop solution so that you can procure and ultimately get it paid for, which uh, is a great value. And I think not only uh, for you, it's Parasoft customers, but ultimately to the, your suppliers and vendors that are, uh, you know, getting paid through the service. All right, and I think we're doing a, a, a one more poll here uh, in terms of just trying to understand, okay, for those folks that are doing checks or still do checks, uh, you know, what percent of, of your payments do you believe are still going out via check? Uh, oh, this is always an interesting question to ask. So we'll give folks, folks a minute here. Critical mass yet? Yep, I think I think we got our answers and I've shared them on the screen if everyone can see those. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh so interesting and not uncommon. It, it looks like over half or 60% of you are doing at least 50% of your payments via check. Uh some of you, about 24%, aren't aren't doing any or you know doing very little, which which is great. But invariably, this, this is what we see: is there's still a lot of checks, you know, in B2B payments. Uh, a lot of it's just legacy. A lot of technology, you know, it just wasn't developed to actually facilitate sort of smarter payments, you know, simpler payments. And so, good news is, uh, Parasoft Pay, you you get that now. So, uh, not not uncommon. And just know that there's help. There's a lot of great solutions that I think you know we'll we'll, we'll touch on here. Um, but just know you're in uh, familiar territory, I guess. And for those of you that are zero to twenty five percent. Uh, good on you. Uh, it tends tends to be more, you know, the minority. Um, but it also suggests, hey, there's a lot of a lot of great room for improvement here. Uh, looks like with uh, with most of you. So happy to talk about some of what we do and how we do it, and of course how it integrates with Parasoft. Uh, I think I think we can go to the next one. There we go. Uh, so a few, so a few things, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk for a few, you know, a couple more minutes and then give it back to Sammy. Um, but again, because so many of you are on checks, right? We, we it's 35% of all bank fraud, and that's not uncommon. That's really almost since the inception of uh, checks back in, you know, really 1800s. Uh, there's people have always, always been trying to find ways to <clears throat> uh, steal somebody's money, you know, perpetrate fraud. You know, catch me if, if you can, if you guys remember that movie, uh, happen, happens all the time, uh, even to this day. So what, you know, Finexio has really been in the business of is one, let's make sure we know who we're paying. So this is security. I'm going to go sort of right to left uh, from on the graph, but making sure, you know, you can be assured that you're paying the right person. You're not overpaying them. Making sure you don't have any potential bad actors in your system, or at least it's getting flagged. So Finexio has built a lot of the tools to make sure that vendors are who they say they are. If they're making a change, you know, they, they can't just, you know, go ahead and do that. 
uh, without any checks or balances. Of course, you know, making sure we're not paying terrorists, uh, money launderers, et cetera. This all just comes, you know, part and parcel with what uh, Connexio does. We, we take uh, really payments compliance, uh, security and fraud very seriously. We have an entire team that's dedicated to it and is monitoring transactions 24-7. Uh, in addition to interacting directly with any vendors or suppliers that we may have, you know, we, we may have questions. With. And so we work very closely with other third party sources to make sure that, you know, the vendors are who they say they are, even uh, that person is who they say they are. Because, of course, making sure the payments get to where they need to go is of paramount importance. And that's really been one of the key, I think, key differentiators for us. We've had zero customer losses, meaning we've been able to facilitate every single payment without any type of loss uh, to any customer ever. And we plan to keep that going. Uh, and then certainly, in, you know, improving cash flow, right? So part of what Connexio really tries to do is uh, offer multiple payment methods. So if a su supplier vendor really values getting paid sooner, there's options there, right? And we can talk about some of the options. Uh, I think we'll, we'll touch on that in, in a couple of slides. Or if they're less concerned about that, yes, you can always you can always send a check. Uh, but really, our goal is to move as much of that off of check, move it to electronic and digital payments, because uh, really it really creates a better experience. It gives you better control, better transparency. We, we can show you that it was delivered, uh, as well as you know, gives that assurance ultimately to uh, you know the vendors and suppliers as well. So I think, uh, we think it's a great great solution, and we've got multiple options for you know vendors and suppliers. So we're not stuck with one option, um, and really that's what Finex is in the business of is finding the best solution for that supplier for that vendor uh, at that time. And then of course we're here to manage if there's any you know changes in. That need to happen um, so that you don't have to worry about that. We deal with all that again with security at the forefront. And then certainly, you know, time and cost. Um, look, it takes time to print all those checks, you know, especially if you're doing it in-house and you're between 50% uh, of all your payments or more that are still checks that you know that takes time, whether you're literally printing them off on a printer and stuffing envelopes, or you have a third-party printer that may be doing it. And, you know, the, the, the thought and the effort that has to go into that. To make sure that it's done right, you're paying the right folks, you're balancing your books, um, you're, you know, posting those payments to your account. Uh, that all comes with, with the service that we provide. Uh, we love it. And so typically, uh, our customers will save a significant amount of time. I think, again, I don't want to say on a bit of thunder, we'll get there. Um, but you can just think if all of a sudden you didn't have to do that every Friday or every two weeks, you know, whatever your sort of AP cycle is, um, all of a sudden now it's you know, more of a click of a button with greater transparency than you've ever ever seen. Also knowing that it's secure. It's really something that you know we're, we're proud to offer and think that it's a great solution for uh, our customers. Um, you know, I'll give you one anecdote and then I'll hand it back to Sammy, but uh, the Worldwide Produce, uh, again, they're on our website, you know, certainly talk, you know, talk to them. Uh, one of the, their biggest things was the Finexo is a lifesaver because now my team doesn't have to do this. They don't have to like stay late on a Friday, you know, writing checks, you know, making sure they're getting out the door, dealing with checks that they get returned and making sure that, you know, the payment does get out there. Uh, Phoenix is able to handle all that. We're happy to handle it and, you know, lets your team work on really more value add uh, work and services that, um, you know, that we just think we just think it, make, it makes sense. And so, you know, the good news is we try to make it simple. We try to make it secure uh, and, not, you know, not having you to have to worry about it. Right. Um, so we're super excited to be here today and talk, but Sammy, I'll give it back to you and, uh, you know, let you add anything else. Yeah, fantastic, Chris. Um, so we will look, look at a couple of things before we are showing the, the actual demo. Um, so if you can click the next slide. Um, so there is a seamless integration between Pairsoft's uh, APIA process and then Finexio's uh, payment platform. Um, as you will see in the demo soon, you can obviously process your invoice approvals in our tool and then as a continuation, add a payment review step and select which invoices you want to pay. Um, after sending them to payments, they are moved automatically over an API to Finexio. That will then take care of, um, you know, checking what is the best way to pay for this vendor, ensure the vendors are, are real, and, and then execute the payment. And after the payment has been done, the information is um, feeding back to the invoice in, in, uh, in Pearsoft and, um, you know, eventually all the way to your ERP system so that you can see there which invoices have been paid and uh, keep all of your books and, and cash planning um, totally up to date. And then before going to the demo, let's recap uh, some of the key points with the next slide. So um, <clears throat> by combining a, a market leading AP automation and payment solution, you can safely and, and securely manage 100% of your spend. So it's, it's not a subset of your vendors or, or subset of your uh, purchase orders or invoices, but actually all of it. Um, and by leaving um, the payment management to, to hands of experts, you can ensure 
that you are not paying to any unwanted suspicious vendor as they will be all uh, checked before before uh, any payment execution. You can ensure timely payment for all of your vendors. So this really is a uh, one-stop shop for, for paying to all of your vendors and uh, eliminate fraud as we will also uh, check every one of the, the vendors uh, before executing a payment. Uh, if you think about the cost of processing uh, invoices, there is a significant opportunity to save with every invoice you process. Um, based on various research, um, companies that automate their entire invoice to pay process are saving up to $30, $31 uh, per every invoice processed. So this can be achieved when you are eliminating the paper entirely from the process, automate the, the approval and you know, GL allocation of invoices, replace the check processing with electronic payment, and also eliminate the need to interact with your vendors to, to um, you know, agree how to pay and let us do the necessary validation of the vendors. So, uh, you know, you can do the math on what is the potential for your uh, particular department. Um, by automating the invoice to pay process, you can free up more than 80% of uh, AP department's uh, time, which can be taken back to more uh, value adding tasks. And last, but definitely not least, uh, by moving away from checks, there is a very concrete money-making opportunity on, on top of the time and, and money savings you can achieve by automating the process. So you will earn a uh, rebate for payments you make. So you, you will basically get a cash back when you are moving away from checks to virtual cards. And here our joint team again will help you to make suppliers uh, you know, move away from those checks. So, so this will be a real opportunity to generate extra revenue and even make this uh, whole initiative to become a net positive to you. Um, Chris, anything you want to add here uh, before we are moving to the demo? I think I think that's it. I mean, so uh, you know, from our from our perspective, it's one. It's you know, the service we provide gives you all that time back. You know, have your team work on other things. Significant savings, uh, time you know, time savings, cost savings. And then, of course, you know, for us, sort of you know, the cherry on top are those rebates that ultimately, you know, in many cases, program, you know, the rebates you get will pay for the program itself. So uh, either zero cost, potentially even, you know, potential, you know, uh, net positive uh, contribution, you know, in terms of uh, net new revenue for you. So, again, depending on the program, depending on the nature of, you know, your vendors, et cetera, uh, there's a great opportunity for, uh, uh, you know, I think just a, a, a great service overall that benefits you uh, and, and the suppliers and vendors that you pay. All right, thank you, Chris. Um, so I think it's uh, time to see the pairs of pay in action. So handing it over to Tammy. Great, thank you. Let me share my screen here. All right, so we should be seeing my home page of paper save. So first of all, thank you, Sammy and Chris. Um, this was great information leading up to uh, this demo. So now it's it's my turn to show you all how it works. Um, I'm Tammy Bauer, I, and I've actually been representing the paper save product for over 15 years now. As I look through the attendees list, I've recognized some of the names that um, I've dealt with over the years. and um, What's been nice over the time that I've been uh, representing the, uh, the, the Paper Save brand is um, I've been able to work with companies and actually see them experience and receive the benefits that um, the Parasoft Paper Save accounts payable invoice automation uh, tool brings to the table. So I think you might have heard an acronym APIA. Well, we do use a lot of acronyms around here, and that just stands for the AP Invoice Automation. So uh, I, if I say that, now you know what I'm talking about. But they've been able to, our customers have been able to experience and receive benefits, saving time on their staff, and also obviously time and equals money to the company, right? So today we have a mixed group on, on the line, which is great. We've got a lot of people. Uh, we have some customers and some of you are leveraging all that, that um, Parasoft has to offer today with the Paper Save APIA. Um, we have ex existing customers that also might use Paper Save, but maybe not the automation and the approval of the invoices. And then we have prospective customers on the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take you through the very beginning process from the moment an invoice is received 
how it goes through that approval process. And then we're going to jump into that, uh, the payment, the new piece that Parasoft is, is offering. So again, you should be seeing my homepage of of paper save and if this isn't familiar to you we can schedule a time and we can go through this um, as well but we're going to jump into the workflow and uh, i'm going to mention some workflow caveats here again our product has been around a long time we have a lot of customers and so what we've been able to do over the years is gleam some best practices from our customers and build these out of the box workflow um, templates. We call them SWIFT templates, right? SWIFT deployment workflows. That means there are set steps and, and criteria rules around these workflows. That enables our customers to get up and running rather quickly and receive those uh, the return on investment very quickly. Now, know that our workflows can be modified. That's a different story for a different time. Um, today, I'm going to take you through our out-of-the-box pre-configured workflow. And the very first step of this workflow is called AP validation. So if I'm the accounts payable, this is where all of my invoices are going to land. And we're not going to talk about how they get there or what happens, but this is where they come in. And really, this is my step of the process to get them routed to an individual for approval, right? So you can see that PaperSafe does do that APIA eliminates a lot of the data entry because we can see that there is fields already populated here. But at this point, my job is to route this invoice to an individual for an approval process, right? So that they can say, yes, we approve this invoice and let's process it to the next step. So I'm gonna route it. It actually is gonna go over to Zulu and George, all right? So we're gonna take, and we're gonna kind of follow this invoice um, through the process. And again, I'm an admin in my system. So what does that mean? I get to see and do everything. So the next step of my process is this review or approval step, right? So I'm going to come in here. And of course, Luann, when she comes into PaperSafe, however she's going to enter and do her approvals, PaperSafe has a, a, a mobile app that she can be doing this from. I'm doing it from our, our web portal here. So I'm going to go ahead and play Luann and we're going to look at this store supply invoice. One of the things that I want to point out is through this whole process from beginning to end, PaperSave is building a workflow history. This is really crucial when it comes to the audits. Um, we, we are day timing and user stamping where this document was and who performed the review action or the activity at that step. Now you're going to see my name in every single one of these um, steps because I'm the one that's logged in. Even though Luann is, uh, I'm approving an invoice for Luann, Luann, but that's really key information too when it comes to those security and regulatory compliances, who actually perform that task. So Luann comes in, she says, yep, this is great. I'm going to approve it. And it goes to the next step. Well, again, workflows, what is the next step? Well, this is where some of those configurations can come in. And um, in our out-of-the-box pre-configured template, a rule can be set that says if that invoice was over Luann's dollar threshold, it might go to the next level of approver, maybe that director of finance or her director. Um, or if it's within her, her threshold, it would go right back to accounting. But guess what? Luann does not need to worry about that. And that's the beauty of an electronic approval process is that you can put these rules in there and being a former accounts payable admin, I call it the ping pong effect. If you are currently on the line and you're not leveraging an electronic workflow process, there's probably a lot of ping ponging going back and forth with invoices, right? Well, you can eliminate all of that with implementing um, paper saved by Parasoft's uh, automation tool. But anyways, that document has left her review step. And where does it go? Well, I happen to know that that invoice was within Luann's threshold. So it didn't get escalated to another step. It actually goes to the review step, which is um, AP review, which I call the last right of refusal. This is accounting's opportunity to look, take one final look at the data, who approved it. Again, looking at that workflow history, seeing that yes, Luann has approved it, um, GL distribution, and taking that last step of review before submitting it into the accounting system. Now, again, I talked today that there's a lot of different people on uh, represented today. 
but there's also a couple of accounting systems uh, probably being represented today. And I believe it's GP and Business Central. So the Parasoft Pay powered by Finexio tool is being launched for GP and Business Central first. And so that's why you're invited to this webcast. And, and um, so when I hit this submit button, Paper Save immediately creates that payables transaction in the accounting system. And for those of you who, who are currently on the line using our APIA tool, this is kind of the end of the line, right? You hit this submit button, which I'm gonna do now. And in my world, it's gonna create a, a transaction inside a GP, but keep in mind, if you're using BC, it would create that um, invoice transaction in BC. But that's really the end of the, the step of the process right now. And that document moves to what's called the completed step. But guess what? It doesn't do that now. It moves over to the payment review step. So if I come in here, here's that storage supply uh, warehouse invoice that I just submitted into GP to create the payables transaction. It's now in the payment review step. But before I go in and do that payment review, I do want to just take a moment to show you what happens. And I'm going to go here to my, again, I'm in GP, but you can do this in Business Central as well. We're going to go down to this voucher. and I'm going to go to the last one here. So here is, oh, this is interesting. So here is that transaction that um, was created. And you'll see that it puts in the distribution, certainly puts in that distribution. And the payment is, uh, the document is also attached and I'd be able to see that as well. All right, so that's what happens in that process. So now what normally happens to you, right? We saw the polls, most of you are still processing checks, whether that's on a weekly basis, twice a month, who knows, right? I don't know that, but you all know. So what's happening? You're running a batch, a payment batch, you're getting a payment journal, Maybe you're doing a query inside a paper save so that you can get those invoices in a, in a view so that the person who says, yes, this is okay to pay, um, can identify them on that journal. Um, maybe they've got a stack of checks in front of them and they're now looking at the invoices electronically. If you're not using paper save um, automation tool right now, I can only assume that somebody has um, a check with a bunch of invoices behind it, paper clip, they're signing it, flipping it over, flipping through the invoices and so on. That's a lot of manual process. And then you have to stuff the envelopes, right? So now what happens? Now they get a notice. They being whoever is the person responsible for saying, yes, it is time to pay this invoice. They get notified by paper save via email. They come into their step of the workflow. And again, if, if that's all they do is they're the approver of those payments, when they come into paper save and click on this open workflow, it's going to take them right to that step. They're not going to have to filter or search for the documents. They're going to be right there. So let's look at this store supply document. All right. So you can see now the, the action or the event buttons have changed. I can, at this point, if I'm the director of finance or the CFO, I can either reject this for payment or I can approve it and push it over to the uh, Pearsoft Pay by Finexio uh, portal, right? That's what I get to do here. But I also can see, obviously, who's approved it, that it was submitted, that a voucher or a, a payables transaction was created. And at this point, I'm just gonna say, yes, it's okay to pay. And we're gonna send all of this information immediately over to the Pearsoft Pay portal so that that invoice is now gonna be scheduled for payment. And I look at the next one. Now, listen, I might get to an invoice and say, you know what? Um, I have some questions as the director of finance or CFO, I'm gonna reject this. Now, one of the things that we have done is we've put a, a, a comment box here that's required. So we, if I try to reject something that is, uh, and a comment has been put in there, it's gonna tell me, we need to know why you're rejecting it. This way it's communicating with the person who's gonna handle that rejection, right? We're gonna say, I wanna say, um, let's, 
confirm, whoops, confirm we received these goods. All right. So that's the information I want to find out uh, before I say it's okay to approve. So I reject it. I don't have to pick where it goes. I've already identified who handles the rejections and I get to the next one and I'm going to hit approve. Now I'm looking at these one at a time. I would assume that that's probably the, the most common way, but but listen, from this screen here in Paper Save, you can certainly see who approved it. You can see the, the vendor, you can see the, you know, the, the distribution if that's what you want. And you can click all of these and hit um, approve and pay, right? Before I go into the portal, uh, the payment portal, let's look at that rejected document. So I'm gonna come down here and it's gonna say payment rejection review, right? So this is the the payment, the WB Mason that I rejected. So again, I happen to be the owner of this um, of this step of the process. And I can see that it was rejected and what my director of finance or the approver of, of, of the payments wants to know, have these goods been received? Well, I can do some investigation and come back here and say, yes, they have, put my notes here and I'm gonna send it back to the payment review. So think about right now, if you're manually processing your check, your payments and you're doing checks, you might've already printed the checks and now they have this question. And if you haven't received the goods, certainly you don't wanna mail that check. So what do you have to do? You have to go in, you've got to avoid it. You've got, there's a lot of hoops you have to jump through, right? Well, we're able to head off those questions and answer those inquiries before anything has to be voided out or any extra work has been done. And talk about time savings. Again, I always go back to the days I was an accounts payable admin and the, the amount of work and time I had to spend just on a Friday to pay the checks. And one other note that I do like to mention is a lot of companies have gone to remote work, right? And if, if you are working from uh, remotely, somebody still has to go into the office. Maybe two people have to go into the office and get those checks printed, get those checks signed, get them stuffed in an envelope and mailed out. If somebody's taking those home to do, listen, we talked about fraud, we've talked about, you know, lost checks, you know, whatever might, might take place. We are eliminating all of that from this process, with this process. Okay, so now what happens? Once we've sent that back to the um, submit for, uh, whoops, I'm sorry, payment review, sorry, let's go back here. Um, we are going to look at this WB Mason. And again, it comes back, it has all of the information that, that is needed and I can go ahead and pay it, okay? So all of that data now has been processed over, right? So now what do we do? Well, where does it go? What happens to it? We've processed it over and now all of that information is going to be sent over to Finexio, um, Parasoft Pay, which is powered by Finexio. And to see all of that information, you're gonna be able to click here. Um, it's gonna ask me to log in. I actually have it logged in already. Uh, this is the portal, right? This is where you're gonna come in, put your username and password. I've already gone in there. And when you come in, this is the first page that you see. Talk about data that you probably don't have. And if you, if you need it, you've got to do a lot, again, jumping through hoops. But this is the dashboard that you immediately see. You get to see your current month's total. You get to see the period totals. And then you can even, I call it slicing and dicing the data up here. You can look at buyer or your funding source, your supplier, invoices, payment status. Uh, maybe you want to see all of the vendors that are currently taking a B card. When you first start out, this is going to be a kind of interesting, right? Because if you're paying by check, nobody's taking a V card right now, right? But once you sign on with um, Parasoft Pay, the Nexio goes in and runs a due diligence around your vendors, right? They're going to check all of the vendor data against their database to find out, hey, maybe that WB Mason or that supply store, they do take a V card from another from another one of their clients. Well, that's what we call that low hanging fruit, right? They're gonna reach out to them. You don't have to do that. You don't have time to do that. 
That's what you are investing in this in pair pairs off pay for. They're going to go in, they're going to run this due diligence on your vendors, identify those vendors that are taking B cards, and, and you're going to immediately see these numbers here. I only have three, right? Three vendors that are receiving the V card, but over the period of time, you're going to see that number increase, 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 because they're going to go out there and they're going to do that hard work. The hard work that, you know, really you don't have time to do. Your team does not have time to do. So this is the dashboard. I think this is awesome information. It's valuable information as well. And you can get to the details simply by clicking on this next tab over, which are the orders, right? So these are the these are the invoices that have been processed. Now there are cutoff times during the day that funding is is taken um, from your funding source. You might have multiple vent or uh, a vendor or supplier with multiple invoices. My my invoices and payments here are are, are one to one. But you might have a supplier that has submitted multiple invoices, and during that funding source time, or when the funds are, are are taken, you'll get one payment. They'll get one payment, and for all three or four or however many invoices. But let's go ahead and look and and see what this what this looks like. I can come in here and filter again on any of these columns. So let's look at um, the uh, come up here and let's filter by this. Let's go into, as I scroll over, you're going to see more information as well, right? Let's go into this WebEx so that you can, um, not WebEx, I'm sorry, <laughs> WEX Enterprise. Let's go in here and look at that. So once, this is this is the steps that take place, right? The information was received, meaning it was received from uh, Paper Saves API A through the portal to Finexio. It was initiated and went through a process. It was funded, meaning the funding the funding source was was um, uh, the funds were taken out of the funding source. the the doc, the payment was sent, and the settle payment settled means that the supplier, the vendor, has received those funds. Right, whether it is ACH, wire, V card, or check. Right, so all of this is done, and this information is right there at your fingertips. There's also supply activity tab that you can go into and you can, again, look at your funding source. You can look at the payment methods, um, the supplier names. You can look at uh, the date range. So if you're looking to see, you know, let's look at our, um, our, you know, the cash flow. What was the cash flow in April versus May? You know, what was the outbound cash? And you can make this uh, fill out these these filters here to get that information. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll just I, I like to look at the the funding source, right? Or, I'm sorry, the payment the payment method. So let's look at um, wires and ACHs uh, for for kicks, right? So I can look at that information and and see that. Or let's look at that B card again. You can always go in and get that information right there and see what um, what those details are. The next tab over here, that's the payment aging. Now I'm not gonna have any of that uh, information because actually we're not paying anything, right? So uh, this is just uh, dummy data, but it's actually being fed into the live Finexios um, database, but nothing's ever being funded. So if I went back to any of these other details, you'd see that nothing was paid other than that one, I think they call it a penny test or something like that. So all of this data, is right there at your fingertips, again, to slice and dice and get the analytics that really from a, a, a check process, you, you, you just can't. Also that, you know, when you're doing those reconciliations, you're going to be able to see from here what hasn't been paid or what hasn't, what checks have gone out and, and haven't been cashed. You're going to be able to see that right from here. And again, that's something that Finexio is going to um, help you uh, help with monitoring right? Making sure that all of these funding uh, payment sources have been processed and why a vendor hasn't deposited a check or used the V card or whatever the, the, the case may be. All right. So let's go back into GP real quick because I want, I do want to, whoops, let's go back into GP here. So I do want to come into that payment area and, um, come in here and I'm going to look at that that a payment for 
supply store because once the payment has been received and um, completed by the the supplier paper save then comes back and communicates with your ERP system GP business central and a payment transaction is going to be created so again something you're not going to have to do it's going to update all of that information and if you are familiar with paper save um, you're familiar then with the term either multi-associated documents or interrelated. That's the new term in our version seven. And what that means is any invoice that was paid from this based on this payment, and you'd see that here, right? Because GP gives you that information. I can come up to additional, which paper save was, which is where paper save is nestled, and I can say show interrelated documents. And when I do that, it's going to open up, and I think my authentication went away, but that's okay. Um, it will open up that document, and you'd see it. And it's actually, if I go back into that workflow as well and go into the completed step, you're going to see all of those completed documents that are associated to payments. And in the workflow, again, you'll, you will see that it is now in the completed step, and the payment was issued to the Nexio. So think about what we've accomplished in, in, um, in this process. We've eliminated the manual approval. We've taken and eliminated the time from, that it takes an accounts payable admin to stuff and mail those checks, right? Um, we've also had paper saved uh, excuse me, Parasoft Pay uh, and Finexio go through the vendors, find the ones that are going to pay by uh, receive payment via V card, and you, in the end, have received kickbacks or uh, that kickback probably isn't the best way to say it, but you've actually gotten a rebate for those vendors and suppliers that are paying and are being uh, paid by V card. All of that is done electronically and you don't have to do any of that paper shuffle anymore. So with that, I am going to stop presenting and turn it back to Sammy and Chris. I'm sure there are a lot of questions. Hopefully we can address them in the time remaining. Thanks, Tammy, for the fantastic demo. Um, and uh, I think, Ashley, um, if you can uh, check if we have any any uh, further questions. Absolutely. We have had a few questions. Um, if you will give me a second, I will pull those up. And one question that we've received is, can you pay in foreign currencies? How do you handle dimensions? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you ca you can pay in foreign cur currencies. Um, when it comes to dimensions, I not hundred percent sure uh, what is the background to the question, but I, I I don't see any real like impact on how you are handling the dimensions today. So basically, we are we are uh, feeding the information, uh, you know, back to ERPs, keeping the the invoice records in ERP up to date, you know, uh, on when the invoice has been paid. So uh, like you know, all of that setup um, should work you know, uh, as it has been uh, has been working so far. I don't see any any problems there. Okay, great. Thank you. Another question we had, how is this different from what our bank can do for us? Right. Yeah, that's a great, great question too. So, uh, so, so we offer the payment as a service. Um, so it's uh, much more than simply offering like multiple payment types, which you and, and your team then still eventually needs to manage. So it's a technology enabled uh, solution run by payments professionals with dedicated support and uh, ongoing supplier and vendor enablement services. Yeah, I could just I could just add to that just you know just a little bit too because um, Sammy's spot on. You know, a bank. You know, the way the way we sort of like what banks do is, you know, they're sort of like the grocery store. So you can buy whatever you want there, right? If you want to check an account, you can do that. If you want like a purchasing card or a corporate card, you can have that. Um, 
you need some ACH, you can do that, but it's really up to you to figure out how best to use those tools. You're the one that still has to engage the suppliers, get them on an ACH program, or figure out you can pay them with a card. Uh, whereas, you know, with the Parasoft solution, all that just happens. It's much more akin to like a restaurant. You just want it to be taken care of, done the best way possible. That that that's what you're getting with uh, the Parasoft Pay solution. So, hopefully, that uh, that helps. Okay, perfect. Here's another question: What happens if the payment? If the check, for example, needs to be voided. Is this done via GP? If so, does it show in paper save again to reissue? Um, yeah, that's a that's a great uh, great uh, question. So basically, um, you know, if the if the check has to be voided, you know, then um, that information will be available in paper save, and you can then uh, act accordingly there. Okay, great. Um, here's another great question. How much time can my AP team expect to save from implementing this? Um, well, based on based on certain studies, um, I think I had some figures in the earlier slides. So um, um, it can be up to 80% uh, of uh, AP team's uh, time that can be saved when uh, the payment related task can be totally eliminated. Okay. Uh, another one, how do you determine which vendors will allow payment methods other than check? Yeah, that's a great one. I can, I can start and then Chris, you can, uh, you can chime in. Uh, so so uh, together with uh, Finexio, we, we are analyzing the customer's uh, supplier list against a number of different uh, payment networks to determine uh, um, like what is the best way to uh, pay for those suppliers. And uh, we use also internal and external data on, on payment method uh, preference to, to fill in the contract and company data gaps. And uh, we are actively encouraging suppliers to receive other payment methods and uh, that and checks uh, by emphasizing the, the value table get. Yeah, no, Sammy, Sammy got it right. And so, you know, what Finexio, so Finexio has direct relationship uh, with multiple card networks. So think MasterCard, Discover, et cetera. So we actually know if suppliers and vendors can and will uh, accept cards. Uh, in many cases, Finexio has its own network. And so oftentimes, you know, there's sort of this, uh, you know, network effect that you get where we already know, we're already paying you know, with a particular method. So that becomes very easy. Outside of that, I think I made a quick, you know, a quick comment in the chat is, we, uh, we have this multi-channel engagement uh, platform where, you know, if we have a email, we're going to send them an email and say, hey, here's some options for you. Uh, even potentially snail mail, if we have an address, you know, the way to sort of preemptively get them engaged. Uh, and then certainly, you know, our team, we have a dedicated, what we call supplier enablement team that will actually actively call on suppliers and vendors to, you know, introduce them to the program and see if we can get them off check and do something more, like, we'll, we'll say preferable, if you will. Okay, great. Um, I have a couple of more questions. So now is the time. If there are anything, uh, any other things in your mind before I ask these next two questions, please put them in the chat or the Q&A. Um, another question is, will Finexio contact vendors who are currently on check payments and try to get them to enroll for ACH or credit card payments? Yeah, there's one where we just, yeah, what we uh, had just mentioned, but yeah, we have an entire... Uh, campaign methodology that we use to you know go after uh the suppliers and vendors to get them converted and uh you know that, that's that's what we're here for we're, we're here to make that uh as simple as possible for you you don't have to worry about how it happens uh you just get to you know see the results and luckily we've been doing this since 2015 we're very good at it uh we know how to have those conversations to you know convert as many suppliers or vendors uh as possible so yeah we, we handle all that on your behalf Okay, great. Another great question. How does this reduce payments fraud? So I can start there. And the, uh, same, certainly could not add anything. So uh, the, the good news is Finexio does 24-7 transaction monitoring, which is probably something you, you know, as your organization, are probably not doing today. Uh, we also will go through and vet every single vendor and supplier that, you know, is going to be paid through, you know, paid through the platform, paid through Parasoft Pay. Uh, you know, what that means is we act, we actively screen each payment before it goes out the door to make sure it's not a terrorist or not on any sort of sanctioned list, you know, the government may have or Interpol may have, like literally it's Interpol and like the, you know, the federal government uh, to make sure we're not paying, you know, we'll just say bad guys. Uh, in addition to looking, we have fraud monitoring that we do. So, you know, making sure, you know, somebody didn't call up, try to represent themselves, you know, either as you or as a supplier and say, hey, 
send all the money over here to this bank account. Uh, we have active tools in place, uh, you know, not only policies, procedures that, you know, Finexio follows to make sure we're talking to the right people and not, you know, letting fraudsters into the, you know, basically into the network. Uh, but we also work with multiple third party uh, data sources that, you know, have been doing this for a long time. You can think guys like Lexus, Nexus, et cetera, where, you know, they're in the business of risk, you know, risk management. And so uh, we leverage multiple tools to you know, keep your payments safe and make sure we're paying the right people. Okay, um, I feel like you have really you kind of answered this through the demo and through other things, but I just want to make sure we get this person's question answered. How long does this take to implement? Um, yeah, I think it's uh, fair to say that uh, most customers uh, would be onboarded within six weeks or so. Great question. Okay, great. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining. There are a few very specific questions that I've seen in here that I want to let you know if we did not answer your question, it's because we are going to reach out to you directly and make sure we get that answer that you need. Um, thank you to all the speakers. And thank you for everyone that attended. We'll be sharing this recording after the call. So um, please let your coworkers know that if they miss something, we're happy to share it with them. And um, if you have any questions at all, please reach out to us. And with that, Sammy, I'll let you close us out. Sounds good. Thanks everybody. Really appreciate your time and attention. And I really hope you are equally excited as uh, I am for this uh, new service. Thank you. Thank you.